Question 4. A student investigates how the current in and brightness of a filament lamp change when different numbers of batteries are connected to the lamp. The student's results are shown in figure 8. Right, number of batteries, 1, 2, 3. Current in milliamps, 60, 83, 91. Right, the more batteries I've got, the current's getting bigger. Explain what these results show about the changes in the filament as the current increases. Now, what we do know is that if you've got more batteries, you've got more voltage. So if we've got more batteries, we've got more voltage, and we've got a bigger current. Right, is it proportional? When the batteries increase by 1, the current is increased by 23 milliamps. And then when the batteries increase by 1 again, this time it only increases by 8 milliamps. So it's not proportional. And that's because it's not going up by the same amount each time. Now, because the current's not going up by the same amount each time, what must be happening is as you've got more current, the bulb's getting hotter. And that means that the resistance of the bulb is getting bigger. Now, where they have talked about the lamp, I'm talking about a bulb. They're the same things. So you could just put lamp instead of bulb. But it doesn't really matter. Part B. The student decides to use a light-dependent resistor, LDR, to get a measure of the change in the brightness of the lamp as the number of batteries is varied. The student uses an arrangement shown in figure 9. So he's got the wires connected to the battery. And the lamp is pretty close to the LDR. And those wires are connected to a resistance meter. Figure 10 shows some of the results. So that's the number of batteries connected to the lamp. 1, 2, 3 again, just like before. This time it's telling you the resistance of the LDR in ohms. 600, 580, 520. State what the resistance readings show about the properties of an LDR. Ah, so an LDR, as the number of batteries get bigger, its resistance is getting smaller. Now, what we can assume is that as the number of batteries is increasing, the bulb is getting more current, so the bulb's going to be brighter. So we can see more batteries cause more light, which causes the LDR's resistance to decrease. So the properties of the LDR, as the amount of light increases, the amount of resistance decreases. Part 2. The student thinks that these results do not give a good indication of the change in brightness of the lamp. Explain one way that the student could improve the experiment with the LDR to give a better indication of the change in brightness of the lamp. Right. The LDR is not very close to the lamp, is it? So the lamp's light will be shining everywhere. And there's actually not that much of it landing on the LDR. So one quick thing that you could do is bring the LDR closer. And also, if there's other light in the room, which we're assuming there is, because I don't think the scientists will be doing the experiment in the dark, otherwise they'll be bumping into things. <laughs> what if we've got another bulb up here? Or what if the sun's up here shining through a window? Why don't we put 
a screen in the way to block out the light from other sources. Now that's what we call ambient light, which is just light in the background. And also it's no good if you put your hand in between the lamp and the LDR. We want to make sure that any changes in the amount of light is because of the lamp that's changing, not because we're casting shadows. We want to make sure that the light level is changing because the amount of light landing on the LDR from the lamp is changing, not because we've popped a shadow in the way by putting our hand in the way. C. Describe how the student could develop the investigation by using an electrical circuit to get a measure of the temperature just above the surface of the lamp. Right. Well, how's about placing a thermistor against the lamp? Because thermistors measure temperature. Why well, don't so we measure the voltage of the thermistor? and measure the current of the thermistor and then calculate the resistance of the thermistor. Now we can use Ohm's law again. Voltage equals current times by resistance. and rearrange it to find resistance. R equals V over I. And there we are. Now you'll notice because it's worth three marks, I'm kind of structuring my answers. So what I'm doing is I'm telling the examiner I'm expecting a mark for that, a mark for that, and a mark for that. You do know who the examiners are, don't you? They're very often just normal teachers. So they do a full day's work during the day and then they come home and they're tired and they've got to sit and mark these. Now if you can make it really easy for them to see what you've wrote nice and neat and structured nicely then it's going to make it easier for them to award you the marks because they'll be able to tell what you're talking about. Number five. Figure 11 shows four plot and compasses on a piece of cardboard. Here we are. State the reason why the four compass needles all point in the same direction. Well, that's because they'll be aligning themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. Part 2. In figure 12, a long wire goes through the centre of the piece of cardboard. The wire is carrying a large electric current downwards. Draw arrows on figure 12 to show the new directions of the four compass needles. Right, I've got a video on this. Click the link at the top. It's electromagnetism. What we're using is the right hand grip rule which shows you the current. Point your thumb which direction that the current is flowing and your fingers show you which way the magnetic field will be. So you can see my fingers are going clockwise. So I need to draw the arrows going clockwise around the wire. So that one will be pointing there, this one will be pointing there, that one will be pointing that way, and that one will be pointing that way. Part B. Figure 13 shows the magnetic field around solenoid P and the magnetic field around solenoid Q. So a solenoid is just a coil of wire. Explain the difference between the two magnetic fields. Right. Well, I can see the direction of this magnetic field is going from the top down to the bottom. 
It has this one's going from the bottom to the top. Now the magnetic field always travels from the north into the south. So that's the north pole and the south pole. So the magnetic field always comes out of the north and goes into the south. So you can see these solenoids are acting as bar magnets but they are orientated in different directions. What else do you spot? Well, look how close these lines are together and compare that to how close these lines are together. If the lines are close together, it means the magnetic field is stronger. Again, I've got a lovely video on magnetism. Click the link above if you want some more help to do with magnetism. Now, since this is electromagnetism, the strength of the magnetism is caused by the strength of the current. So what we can assume is it's got the same number of coils on each of these solenoids. So therefore, this must have more current. Coil Q has got more current going through it. And that's where three marks and that's what we've covered. By lines, what I mean is magnetic field lines. Question C. Figure 14 shows a wire between the poles of a magnet. There's the wire. Poles of a magnet, so south-north, south-north. So that north and that south, that wire is going between them. The wire is carrying a current of 0 0.3 amps, right, at I. The strength of the magnetic field between the poles is 0 0.65 newtons per amp metre. That's B. Magnetic field strength. The length of the wire inside the magnetic field is 0.2 metres. That's L. Calculate the size of the force, F, is question mark. That's our target. Acting on the wire. Use an equation selected from the list of equations at the end of this paper. So we're looking for something that's got F, um, B, I and L in. There we go. F equals B I L. Right, that L just looks like I, to be honest. It hasn't been wrote very well. Force on a conductor at right angles to a magnetic field carrying a current equals magnetic flux density or magnetic field strength times by the current times by the length. F equals Bill. Force equals magnetic field strength times by the current times by the length. And we don't need to rearrange it, so let's just pop the numbers in. And that equals 0.039, and that'll be Newtons. Part 2. Describe the magnitude and direction of the forces between the wire and the magnet. Right. This is Fleming's left-hand motor rule. I've got a lovely video on that. If you want to click the link above to find out more about that. Now the first finger shows you which way the magnetic field travels. And it always travels no, 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 knuckles north, fingertips are south. And as you can see on here, the magnetic field just go with the magnetic field that's on the inside of the magnet. There's your north, there's your south. So align your first finger, which shows you the field. First finger shows you the field. Align it that way. Now your second finger shows you the current. And it shows you the conventional current. And you can see the current is pointing this way. So my finger is already pointing the correct direction. And then your thumb shows you which way the movement will be 
because of the force on the wire. So you can see the wire is going to move upwards. Now it asks you not only what is going to happen to the wire, it's also asking you what's the force going to be on the magnet. Now that is Newton's third law. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if there is a force on the wire going upwards, then there will also be a force on the magnet going downwards. And the forces will be the same size, but they'll be in the opposite direction. And these two points are Newton's third law. Not that you'll get any extra marks for that, but I just thought you might like to know. Yay, we've finished the test. I've got a blank page here. Oh, oi, oi. I have not finished the test. Always keep turning the pages until you get to the equations at the back. That happened to some students the other year. They saw the blank page, they thought the test was finished. Look at this. One mark, two, three, four, five, six, twelve barnacles. They would have missed out on twelve marks if they'd made that mistake. And just in case you turn two pages at once. Oh look, I've finished. Alright, pay attention to page numbers. 16, 17... 18, 19, 20. Right, I haven't missed out anything. Want to see more videos like this? Subscribe to my channel, GCSE Physics Explained. Thanks very much and bye for now.